We think by the end of the year, very early next year, we'll, we'll start to be making pouch packs. So that means we'll have a coin cell and a pouch pack. And now the pouch pack is what's sitting in your phone and your laptops. But what's great about our battery is that that can also go into cars, that can also go into grid and house batteries. So um, that pouch pack is very versatile. Uh, it'll be, you know, a square or rectangle, uh, and it'll be able to be working in many different applications that, you know, including EVs, uh, because it's, it's, it's such a, you know, next gen battery. It has many different applications. Craig Nickel is back. He's the founder and CEO of Graphene Manufacturing Group, trades on the TSX Venture under the symbol GMG and trades in the United States under the symbol GMGMF. Craig, welcome back. Hi, James. Good to be back. Thank you for having me. It's fantastic to have you as usual, Craig. Um, you put out two amazing back-to-back -back press releases over the last couple of days. And in fact, there were three gems in there. And uh, they're, they're, they're exciting as a shareholder for a number of reasons, but... Um, First, let's start with the one of October the 25th, where you announced that uh, GMG and Bosch had signed a collaborative agreement for Bosch to design and deliver GMG's graphene aluminum ion battery manufacturing plant. Now, my first question for you in that regard is, is this plant is not the pilot plant. This is for the commercial production plant. That's right, yeah. So the pilot plant, we've um, effectively got everything arrived and it's got it's been delayed a bit because we wanted to put it into the new headquarters, which we just signed the lease for. So that should be another couple of weeks that we'll have that up and run, running, running. So this this deal we've uh, we've done with um, with Bosch is very exciting because it sets us up for the next phase. It's the execution capability, which you know we either needed to do in house, do it through a consortium of different companies, or um, very very uniquely position Bosch to be able to build and 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 actually put together and install and oper and, and effectively commission a, through an operation a brand new battery facility battery manufacturing facility so we're very very excited and it and it is that next stage so we'll we'll take everything we learn from the pilot plant give that to Bosch and then working with Bosch they'll come back with a plant build it for us and give that back to us for us to operate and obviously own and and and, and expand so this production facility is going to produce the batteries that you develop successfully in the pilot plant. That's correct. Yes. So then, the net, so to, today you put out the press release that you had actually uh, moved forward and commenced construction of the pilot plant. So this all seems to be moving very quickly now. Um, whereas you know this is earlier this year it was just announced, and now you're already moving to construct the pilot plant, and you've already got a deal to build the commercial. Uh, production plant with a global powerhouse of technology production. So I'm curious as to, does this mean you're going to start producing batteries at the uh, pilot plant tomorrow? Well, uh, we're, we're definitely hoping to, to put batteries out into the market at a commercial scale, um, you know, ho hopefully sometime next year. There's a lot of things that have got to come through, um, but the pilot plant will definitely be run up and running um, uh, in the very near near future, in, we're talking weeks, not even months. Um, and you know, we've we've also got our pilot planned at University of Queensland. So you've got multiple multiple pilot plants. It's probably it's a bit hard to understand, but we're making batteries already at UQ. We're doing a lot of testing and development, and we're working through getting our prototype ready by the end of the year. And we feel quite comfortable with that. And that's just with um, these little watch batteries, these coin cell batteries. Um, and then now we've got our pilot plan happening, so we'll do even more work there. And that just gets us to understand and, and perfect this particular type of new battery because it's a completely new new way of making a battery just out of carbon and aluminium. And then we'll hand all that over and then Bosch will come back and deliver us a new factory, uh, which will then hopefully be able to operate next year and sell into the market. Um, so it's us utilizing a lot of existing technologies except uh, the nanochemistry that we have makes this a really special, special battery and kind of top performing battery, which is, which is why, again, we're so excited because it has so many levers and so many opportunities. Sure. So then um, people listen to, I've had a couple of conversations, people say, well, coin cell batteries, what uses coin cell batteries? What uses pouch cell batteries? People don't understand that these are just yeah. industry jargon for the batteries mm -hmm. that power absolutely all of our personal devices. 
And mm -hmm. so, I mean, agreed and accepted that you could make a, uh, you know, a Fortune 500 company just out of making coin cell batteries for one small part of the market. But yeah. questions linger. How soon until have you started to do any experimentation with larger application batteries like for automobiles? Yeah, so that links us into the third announcement, which is around building our pilot plant battery um, uh, for, for, for pouch packs. Now, this means, you know, we think by the end of the year, very early next year, we'll, we'll start to be making pouch packs. So that means we'll have a coin cell and a pouch pack. And now the pouch pack is what's sitting in your phone and your laptops. But what's great about our battery is that that can also go into cars, that can also go into grid and house batteries. So um, that pouch pack is very versatile. Uh, it'll be, you know, a square or rectangle, uh, and it'll be able to be working in many different applications that, you know, including EVs, uh, because it's, it's, it's such a, you know, next gen battery. It has many different applications and that pouch pack will be able to do that. You'll just put many of them in to do a certain task that you want. Um, so the round ones that we're all familiar with that you see in the Teslas, the 18650s and the other ones that are coming out, um, they are predominantly designed around removing heat out of the battery. And um, we, we, in, a, in an aluminium ion battery, you don't really have that problem. So we won't be going, likely won't be going with a round one. We'll just have square, rectangle, and you can put that in pretty much anything you want. Mm -hmm. Elon Musk is investing a lot in battery manufacturing around the world. Does he, is he aware of what, what GMG is up to? Uh, look, I think um, it's for him to kind of work, work through what he's doing. He, he's obviously at, at massive scale, the largest scale there is, and we're at the other end. We're just starting out. So, you know, he's, he's already done uh, some amazing things and been obviously a cause of a, a lot of this, arguably, uh, this transition. I think what, where we're going right now is, is just making sure that we can get chemistry right. Um, some very big uh, prospective customers and companies are, are watching us very closely, uh, some you know, under very intense NDAs. Uh, and if we get the nanochemistry right, uh, we can then put that into pouch packs, which then can go into anything. And then you have a very low cost, highly high performing battery which can be reused and, and recycled and very low cost to the environment as well um, with no lithium. So we just got to move through these next few months. And, you know, we're very excited in the company because there's a lot of things going on a lot. We've got a, we've got a new headquarters, which we're going to bring everything together, put the pilot plant in. Uh, we'll be able to bring um, some, some good uh, images of that when it's all put together and we'll be able to show what it looks like. Um, these things aren't big, they're not very costly, um, but they're, they're huge IP, massive nanotechnology, intellectual property. And when you have that, you can push things faster because you're using existing equipment, but with, in, in new ways. So it's very exciting, James. Sure. So has all of this battery progress put the uh, liquid graphene applications for various components on the back burner, or are those sets still moving forward no. as well? No, we really got we split the team. So we split the business into one into two teams. One team's out there getting, pushing the revenue for air conditioning coating systems, and also to some extent graphene lubricants. But it's got got it's just finding it, um, its way through, uh, which is good in a lot of different custom interactions. And then the other team is battery delivery. So two very different types of uh, projects, but they all revolve around our ability to make fantastic graphene at, at, at low cost. Um, and also spread the risk uh, for our company around revenues, cost profiles, uh, revenue profiles. So TXR is um, our air conditioning coating system for saving energy and existing air conditioners. Is re we're really focused in the Middle East. Uh, we have our lead technician over in, in Dubai in the Middle East uh, helping our partner over there, Opinia, um, go through some more proof of uh, delivery of, of demonstrations. Um, it's, a, it's a massive opportunity um, for them and for us uh, that, and also for, quite frankly, the Middle East, uh, for Dubai. Um, most, uh, most, air, most hotel rooms have two air conditioners that just are always on or, or they're cycling to make sure they don't um, one fall over the other. So there's enormous heavy capital and, and operational uh, 
uh, cost to to keep their 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 living in in cool uh, t- temperatures, and hopefully we can do some really big changes on reducing their emissions and energy uh, consumption costs around that. And we're still adamant that 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 is a, um, a huge opportunity for us, and we're putting a lot of effort and, and team time and um, into into making that happen. So that's certainly not in any way. Um, you know, the battery team is certainly in its, in its own space, a very technical space, and the sales and marketing on, on our um, TXR is also very much um, pushing through as well. And we obviously would love to come out with some you know, news on that, and, and when it does break, it, it, it will be the first of its kind um, and, and we'll be very happy to get there. We're creating a new market there. That's, that's what that's all about. Um, whereas the battery market is you're going into existing markets, existing technologies, it's swapping out, and it's a technical project. Um, so two very good um, things to be running in parallel, in my opinion. Sure. Are there any other emerging battery technologies that um, might be considered an improvement on uh, the requirement for metals like uh, lithium, like nickel, like cobalt? Are there any other mm-hmm. technologies like that out there that you're kind of looking at in the and wondering if they might represent a bit of a, a threat competitively? Yeah, I think it, it's difficult to find one that doesn't have lithium. That's, that's where it sits. Um, pretty much all of the competitors that, you know, you, the market's so big, honestly, it's almost not a competitor. But, um, but if you say, okay, what, is, what, is, what are the competing technologies from a technology point of view? They're almost all lithium. You're just adding different elements to them to, to make a um, to make it slightly more uh, safe or more more green um, but it, it's fundamentally a lithium product uh, battery um, the, the other batteries out there other technologies like your sodium ion potassium ion are generally uh, uh, much bigger uh, type batteries and they probably won't go where we're going to go which is in you know personal electronics up front um, you have your zinc and aluminium airs, but they are very different types of technologies, not like ours, which ours is swappable. So they they also won't be able to come in with, you know, in any areas that we're going to go into in personal electronics. Then you're really looking at um, some of like the flow batteries, which are big um, pump flowing, that, that vanadium flow or iron flow. And they're, again, not in this space. So we, we're quite unique. We're really just focused on... Um, if anything, competing against a lithium um, type of technology with maybe some advanced um, chemistry. Um, but you know, the, the lithium batteries have their, have their problems. So that's why we, we can come in and just be a complete new fresh face and have all of the performance benefits. Um, to be really clear, I don't think there's anything out there that has the charging capability of our battery. That's the thing that will knock it out of the park on pretty much any other battery comparative. Um, ours, charges, ours charges so fast and discharges so fast that, that I don't think there's any technology out there that's that's anywhere close, except for potentially a supercapacitor, which does not operate like a battery at all, and it just comes in and out, in and out. So, you know, in some areas where there's just nothing like us at all, in other areas where we're brushing up shoulder to shoulder, but then they're all lithium. Mm. And, and that's why we're, we're quite a unique beast. Uh, that's why we've been told by some of the biggest companies as well, we are leading the space in the world. And that's when you, you get to be able to do um, partnerships like this p- partnership with Bosch. Um, you know, it's a $500 billion company um, operating and manufacturing in 190 countries around the world, um, including Australia, where they've been manufacturing uh, for more than 50 years and helping um, companies like ours for 50 years, build you know, leading automated production lines. Um, you know, they're, they're in this because they can see there's, there's a potential for this as well. Right, right. Um, okay, so then there is also a range of other applications for your graphene, uh, including mm-hmm. fuel additives, um, construction material additives to create a fire mm-hmm. prevention coefficient. How are all of those moving along? There's a raft of other products that we could go into and we would need to go and hire probably some other people to come in and really push them out. And right now the, the team is is fully occupied and I, I, I don't really want to increase overheads 
to go and chase another product. We do occasionally have um, have universities who, who who bring to us new interesting products that opportunities are new next generation type uh, opportunities, but we tend to just provide them graphene only. Um, and so we do occasionally one of those uh, never and again, and we just recently did one um, providing graphene into a supercapacitor, super which is charged with our graphene inside um, your body. And it's as you move the body, it, it actually charges the battery. So then it can charge whatever you need, your cochlear impaired, your, your heart pacer, um, pacemaker. So there are projects like that that come along and go, oh, that's interesting, I'll, I'll support that with some graphene. All right, Craig, Indeed. well, that's a fantastic update. Congratulations on everything you're doing, a fantastic job. I couldn't be happier as a shareholder and uh, I hope to catch up with you soon in the next press release. Great, thanks for that, James, appreciate it. Catch Thank you again. Thanks for your time, bye for now.